Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today I'm going to show you a new plugin that just came out the other day. It is from Polygon, which you might have heard of. They have really great high quality textures, models, and HDRIs, as well as a good, a pretty good library of free assets that you can use. But they've just released their C4D plugin that works with Cinema 4D, Redshift, Octane, all that stuff, right? So really cool to check it out. Um, basically, if you do like a lot of interior design or renders like this, this is going to be something you're probably going to want. Uh, so they have all kinds of great things like decor, pillows, fabrics, curtains, things like that to really, you know, build an interior space. Um, it's really easy to set up. Basically, you've got the new Cinema 4D plugin. You've got uh, basically it opens up a window inside your browser. It acts just like an asset browser. You just drag and drop. You download. Everything's built in within it. It's got the documents on how to install it. Super easy to follow. So once you get that installed, you just have it in here. You go to extensions and go open up Polygon. And it opens up the window, which you can dock. And so you can put it right in here, just like uh, the asset browser or anything else. So uh, this cool thing is we've got textures and we've got all kinds of textures, lots of fabrics, countertops, uh, terrazzos, clay, things like that. Uh, brick floors, tile floors. Pretty much if you've seen it inside of a house or a bathroom, uh, it's probably going to be in here, most likely. Uh, then there's lots of models, which you have like things like weird fancy chairs that they just added, which to me, this one looks like if you took a bone and stuck it out the back in there, it looks just like the back half of the, the Among Us guy. It's kind of sus. Anyway, I actually have never played Among Us. As many games as I've played in my life, just never wanted to play with randoms, to be honest. Uh, so anyway, we've got like doors, windows, olives, paintings, lamps, all kinds of things. <laughs> VCRs, uh, light bulbs, waffles, couches, pillows, which is really where it all shines. It's like these little filler things. You can do a bowl of nuts or coffee beans, whatever. Really, you know, building these interior shots with all kinds of random things. You, you know, they make sense together and they go together. That's the thing. Um, like vegetation, they've got lots of house plants and stuff like that. Trees, flowers, all this stuff. It's really pretty. And so if you want to uh, download this and you can like choose a plan and it opens up and it's like $15 a month for four assets. That's kind of like to me, these prices are way too high. But, you know, the thing is with anything that is out there, the value of it, you know, if you use it enough, it's worth it. For me, this wouldn't be worth it. I wouldn't use it enough. They have yearly plans that make it cheaper. Also, they have student plans that make it 50% off. So that's good um, for starters and stuff to, to build up your reservoir. Reservoir? Resume? Kind of portfolio is what I think what I was trying to say. Um, but then, you know, but 16 assets, 32 assets for $40 a month. I don't know. That seems really expensive to me. But, you know, the quality is there. So there's that. Anyway, so look, what I suggest is download it and use the free assets because they're really cool. So let's take a look at just how easy it is to work and how easy it works with Redshift. Okay, so let's check it out. So we'll go ahead and you can choose as a free category here. Uh, we could bring my, uh, open up a new scene here with my shader ball. Whoop, and let's grab something that's not available through like Substance or anything like that because they got terrazzos. All kinds of stuff. We've got Quixel looking things. Uh, really where he shines, I think, is with us, like hardwood floors and tiles and stuff like that. So let's grab like this tile here. You simply say it says free. You click it. You can set your default download to like 4K, 2K, whatever. Inside of here, default texture resolution. The whole the doc document tells you how to do all this. So I've just downloaded this in 4K while we were talking. And then I hit apply. It's going to instantly apply that to our ball just like that. And if we open that up, you see it's the new shader graph which is nice. Everything's hooked up, ready to rock and roll. Uh, displacement is even set up at negative 0.5 and 0.5, which is my favorite thing. The only odd caveat is, is that the scale is set to zero. So useless. Uh, so we'll create that up to one and see how it goes. And then obviously for displacement, we need to add a redshift object tag, tessellate it and turn on displacement. Okay. And we'll tile this a little more. We'll say like three, because I want it to be a little smaller like that. So we'll just go ahead and hit render on this and we'll take a look. So a lot of the materials do work really well right out the gate, but some of the things do still need a little tweaking just because there's just differences between all the render softwares. 
So if there's not a texture map driving every single thing, it's going to need some tweaking. Like I think this would really, really benefit from some coat map. So we're going to go to uh, coating and turn that up. And that's going to put that shine on it. And you could probably like hook up a bump and stuff, but already right off the bat, just cranking that coat map on there has, you know, elevated this quite a bit. The displacement's looking nice and well. I think that looks good. It looks like a good bump. We could obviously increase it if we wanted to to make it more distinct. And then the other thing is, you can see that it really offset those just a little bit, which is nice. Um, but the IORs and stuff like that, normally um, some of them are, don't come in exactly right. This one seems to, they always seem to be at 1.5 default. So for whatever reason, the IOR isn't set. So I want the IOR of this tile to probably be a little higher because I want it to be kind of shinier. So there we go. But you can look that stuff up. But uh, the cool thing is with these models and stuff, let's go back to this blank scene and check out the models real quick. And then we'll, you know, we'll pretty much wrap it up uh, with go to free. And we'll do something like this uh, cool uh, chair. We'll just import this 4K chair just like that. Came in sideways. Kind of annoying. Not the biggest deal. We'll say negative 90, rotate it around, and then we'll come in here. And you can see the geometry on these. Let me scale this back down. So you can see this super nice, clean geometry. Not super crazy, super heavy. Really, really nice. And uh, we can just go ahead and render this, see what it's going to look like. Go ahead and render that out. So you can see that looks pretty good. Uh, I do think that one, this side piece here, let's go ahead and get this. So like the metalness value is kind of messed up. So how do we fix that? Well, you just, you know, type in a ramp here, add that in there. And then we're going to choose this value here and just go to like 1%. And that's going to bring that back. And now it should like actually act like metal. Just basically you have to lift your blacks off of absolute black for it to work with metalness. Um, okay, and then for the leather part, um, I like to add a little bit of sheen on there. So we're going to come into sheen and do like 0.3. And we'll do that on the other texture as well. Sheen, little Charlie, 0.3. And now that might be a little intense, but you can tell, you know, what that would add to that. Maybe back that off a little bit. But now it's just become suede and it looks really nice really quickly and easily. So is it perfect no, because with anything that's not made exactly for Redshift, when you drag and drop it in, it's always going to need some tweaking. It's just kind of a lame thing. Um, I wish all the renderers would just, you know, make up their minds and work together. So when people made stuff, they could do it for all of them uh, easier. But, uh, you know, if you do want Redshift materials uh, that just work great with Redshift without having to tweak anything, you should check out my material pack available but also check out uh, the mind emotion workshop which is available now as well as individual chapters are being broken up and made available for focus training so if you're not ready to commit to 40 plus hours of training and just like three hours of training over the month or maybe like five plus hours of training in materials or seven in um, lighting and then i think it's six in modeling uh, so you can you know you can pick and choose and get them kind of all a card style for like 70 dollars uh, rather than the 500 for the whole package. So you just knows. dive in and take the one thing you want to learn that's available in the description below. Uh, one more thing I want to show before we're done with this is like plants because, you know, plants are pretty cool. Check out, and once again, we just import this. And I will say the plants in this look really, really nice. And you actually don't have to do much to them at all to make them look well. So house plants are one of those things it's really hard to find um, really good models of because those are really those things like will instantly make a scene look fake if you have bad house plants. But these look really good. They're all, you know, hooked up. They're actually made in the new standard material with the substance, subsurface scattering uh, built in and everything like that. You still do, do still need to change the IOR. I would lower plants IOR down to like 1.3. Um, but you can see that light's coming through. Everything, it looks really nice. Cool. Again, mentalist value being driven by a texture map, uh, being purely black. I don't know what the point of that would be. Just remove that and you can turn it up like a little bit if you wanted to have like a little bit of metalness. But you know, everything's kind of a, a give and take. But there you go. Those look really, really nice. We can come in here and look at them. You can see they're obviously like actual 3D 
plants. I think that's the key. They actually have thickness. They're not like atlases. So they actually will react with that set of surface and they look really, really good. So you can get some nice cool shots, you know, put that in front of your camera. Do a little bokeh on that with a nice couch in the background. Whew, money, right? All right, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention that the Polygon is available. If you want to subscribe and stuff, let me know. I'll link it below. I don't, I'm not affiliated to them or anything. I just think it's a pretty cool plugin that I want you to be aware of. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a great day. See you later.